Art is my job. Do I have any hobbies? Hey everyone, welcome back to Art of the Cards. And today I'm going to show you one of my hobbies. And one of my favorite non-drawing hobbies is sewing. I love sewing and creating things with fabric. Am I good at it? <laughs> Fun fact, I hate following pattern instructions. Like when you go to a fabric store and you find a pattern for something you want and you buy the pattern, it comes with the pattern pieces and then this huge pamphlet of detailed instructions. For me, I don't know about you, but for me, reading instructions is really challenging. I am a visual learner. I love watching someone do something or have someone sitting with me and showing me and then I can physically do that. I learn by doing and by seeing someone else do something. And that's why I love today's sponsor who is Skillshare. For those of you who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community where millions can come together to take the next step on their creative journey. And they have thousands of different classes, but I'll talk a little bit more about them later on in this video. Today, I was inspired to sew a sea turtle Blush. I've painted and drawn sea turtles before and they're one of my favorite animals, but I don't have a sea turtle plushie. So I decided, yeah, I wanted to make like a little patchwork quilt stuffed sea turtle. The inspiration came when I was mumbling around on Pinterest trying to find some inspiration for sea life for my mermaid drawings and I came across a generic pattern for a sea turtle plush. It was just the pattern, no instructions. So I printed it out. If you guys are interested, I will link it in the description box below. But I printed out the pattern pieces and thought, hey, I can do this. So yeah, let me let me take you on this journey of, of trying to to create a sea turtle plush with no instructions. While I have bought and sewn things from patterns, I've never completely followed point by point instructions, but there are a few things that I do know about patterns. So cutting out the pattern pieces and cutting out the fabric wasn't too challenging. And the pattern had a few instructions written on it. Pinning all the pieces together was okay. I think I only pricked my finger a few times. <laughs> Dangerous hobbies. But once I got to the sewing part, that's where things began to get a little bit challenging. Uh, for example, I wanted to make some embellishments on my turtle and give him some cute button eyes. I was going for the, the Coraline look, I guess. <laughs> and I realized as I was beginning to put the pieces together and pinning them and getting ready to sew, that if I sewed and stuffed the turtle first before putting the button eyes, that it's a lot more challenging to sew those buttons on. That I probably should sew the buttons on before I put the turtle together. Second fun fact about me, I love buttons. I love collecting vintage buttons. I find them at thrift stores and garage sales and rummage sales and flea markets. I looked through a couple of them. I originally thought about doing like one big eye and one tiny eye, but I realized that when you sew your, your pieces together, you sew them inside out and then you flip them. So you don't have like the raw edges on the outside of your plush. When you do that, you need to make sure that if you, that everything can fit through the small opening that you have. And some of my buttons were just a little too big and I knew it would be a challenge to get that through there. So I ended up, after testing a whole bunch, picking two kind of tie-dye rainbow button eyes, which I think are pretty cool. So I sewed those on and then began to stitch up all the pieces. Originally, I was going to sew this by hand I think I sewed one of the front flippers by hand and went, mm, I'm going to get out my sewing machine and sew the rest of them up. So I actually don't have any footage of me using the sewing machine because I was recording this in my studio and my sewing machine is in my room. So I didn't want to bring my so many, all my sewing stuff into the studio. So I would record some of it and then I would run up to my room and sew it and then I'd come back down. It was a bit hectic, but I wanted to share this with you. So there you go. Once I got everything sewn together, I began to flip all the pieces out and look how cute his face turned out. I love it. I kind of wish that I would have had both buttons going the same direction, like the, the, the directional lines are kind of wonky, but it's okay. I'll live with it. The next step is to assemble everything together. This is the part where I begin to realize that instructions would be helpful. If you've never sewn a plushie, um, it's kind of hard to explain that uh, putting it together is completely backwards. Like you have to, you have to sew everything inside out and then flip it. 
but it plays tricks with your mind. And there's so many other things you have to think about. Otherwise, when you get done, <laughs> your sea turtle's head's gonna be sewn upside down. So whenever I come across an art or crafty thing that I am unsure of, I'll jump over to Skillshare to see if they have a video talking about that. I have an annual membership to Skillshare, which gives me access to any of their classes. And you can find classes on so many different topics from illustrations and graphic designs, watercolor, oil painting. I jumped on there to see if there were some classes on sewing plushies and I was surprised at how many I found. The first one I looked at is a very basic beginner's guide to sewing a plushie. After watching that one is when I found her. <gasps> Tatiana is an amazing stuffed animal plushie sewer. She makes the cutest things. Loved it. As soon as I finished that class, I jumped right into our next class, which lucky for me was how to sew a like tortoise turtle character. And oh, her design and setup was totally different than what I was creating, but I got so many ideas for the next time I make my turtle. If you have never tried Skillshare out before, they want to give you your first two months for free. I'll leave a link in the description box below where you can pick up your two months for free. After that, an annual membership works out to be less than $10 a month, which is cheaper than my Netflix account. Just remember as you are learning a new skill that not to expect perfection from yourself the first time out, that it's okay if things are wonky and a little off. That's how you learn. Take, for example, my fantastic sea turtle plush, which after I have him all sewn up, I have to turn him right side out. I want to carefully turn him inside out so that I don't rip any of the side stitches. And once he is flipped right side out, you can kind of get your first look at what your plush is going to look like. And I can tell already, he's a little wonky. He's got some character, uh, but I love him. He, his legs definitely shifted as I began sewing him. Something that I can make better next time, but I don't know, he's got character. Once I do a quick check just to make sure that his flippers and head are sewn on the right direction uh, and that I don't have to rip the stitches out again to re-sew him, <laughs> it's time to stuff my turtle. So I grab some batting and I stuff my turtle and then I want to sew up the little tiny opening. There is so many different kinds of stitches that you can use here. Um, there's one called the ladder stitch, which if done correctly, you don't even see your stitch marks, which is amazing. And at one time in my life, I knew how to do this stitch, but for the life of me, could not remember. I'll have to go research one of those videos on Skillshare to, remind, to refresh my mind on the ladder stitch. But at the end, he turned out really cute. And if you guys would like to see some of the videos of my other hobbies, let me know. Um, I have quite a few things I enjoy doing that aren't directly drawing and painting. So let me know in the comment section below what are your favorite hobbies to do. Who knows, I might find something, something new to try out. And as always, God bless you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Stay creative, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.